Hello everybody, welcome to a uh, September edition of the new, new, start again. My phone just buzzed while I was talking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Try again. Hello everybody, welcome to the September edition of the newsletter at Hagley Golf Course and Country Club. Darren? Yeah, this month we're going to be covering a number of topics. Uh, we've got an interview with Debbie about safeguarding. This is Debbie LeCain. Uh, we've got uh, some time spent with Brian looking at some green equi greens equipment he's had on at higher, the purpose of it and the benefits um, on, for the course. We've got some time spent with Ben in the um, fitting bay on the pro shop, in the pro shop. And also we've got some time with Finley Clark out on the course looking at you know uh, how we play the 18th, both myself, Matt, and Finn's perceptions of that. So let's get stuck straight into it. Let's do it. So here with Brian on the practice screen. Um, behind me you can see a piece of equipment that they've got on hire. Uh, this is being done on the practice screen right now, but they are obviously going to be doing all of the greens around the course. So Brian, can you explain uh, what this piece of equipment is? what it's doing and the benefits that we hopefully will see. This is the Air 2 G2 air, in, air injection machine. It's got three probes which go down 12 inches into the ground and then it blasts air at around about six bar. And with each explosion it shatters the hard pan, any compacted soils down there, it goes down and it goes sideways and then the air comes slightly back up which creates a bit of a disturbance. Is that, is, is that also sort of aerating the roots of the grass as well? It's or? aerating the roots of the grass, it's creating drainage area, it's creating fissures within the within the soil structure that's going to allow moisture to work its way down, right. down below. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good piece of kit, it's hopefully going to replace having it, us to do Anything like verti draining in the future, we're not have to, going to have to do that. So less disruption. It's less disruption. Right. It takes longer, but it's less disruption to the surface. And once the rollers, once the green zone's been on it, the roller has been on it, then the, the surface is more or less back to how it, it should be. Right. How, how long typically does it take to do a green like the ninth, for instance? We can get. This week we've been getting around about six greens done a day. Okay. So. Depending on the size of the greens, bigger greens, we've, we've got five done in, in a day. Right. Okay. So, we've, it's, we had it on Tuesday and it's, we're just finishing the last one now. So, we've noticed, obviously while Matt's been filming, as it's pushing this air in, it's actually lifting the ground up. It's lifting the ground up, Is, the, yeah, is that right. because the air's hitting a hard stop, clay or something, and forcing back? Because this is the first time we've used this, that's probably the case. It's harder down below. Yeah. And it would be great if we could get something that could go even deeper down. Right. And, and create even more explosions and, and bring the air up to shatter in any deeper hard pans. Right. Because a lot of our greens are built up at the back. So there's a lot of ground was made up over the over the when the place was created and yeah. the greens were built. So there's some issues down below as well, which is making some of the water again uh, difficult to get away. But this is a good start. This is going down 12 inches, but it throws it down and it throws it sideways, so it's shattering a certain amount of the hard pan that's down there. Is there a plan to do this a couple of times a year if it's, if it's successful and it works? I'd like to do it a couple of times a year. I'd like to do it three or four times during the winter months alone if it's, uh, if it's a success. Is, is this something that sort of complements holotining or is it a totally different process in looking after the greens? It's it's. It goes hand in glove with holotining. It goes a lot deeper than the holotining, but you need to carry on with the holotining as well because right. the holotining that physically, the that, that physically reduces the thatch layer right. and the, the, the organic matter layer that's on the surface of the greens. Whereas this goes down considerably deeper and just explodes the air. Well, thank you very much, Brian. You heard it here first. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, we're here today in the custom fitting room here at Hagley Golf and Country Club. I've been joined by Ben and we're just going to give you some insights into the services and the products that they have on offer and how they can help improve your game. So obviously Ben, there's an extensive range of golf equipment available out there. Yep. What do you actually stock here at Hagley? Well Darren, we stock all Ping, all Mizuno, Callaway, Bemros, Strixon, TaylorMade. We have all the carts, so we have all the shafts, every club head in all different lie angles drivers, woods, irons, wedges, you name it. And as far as fitting goes? 
as far as fitting pros, we offer a PGA, custom fitting process. Right. So if you have a fitting here at Hagley, not only will it be free of charge if you buy the clubs, it will also be by a PGA professional. No. Is, is that not more expensive though than say going to online or American Golf? Or? Well that's what people would obviously expect but actually we do offer a price match service as well to online and American Golf. So, so the benefit is it's fitted for me and I'm only going to pay the same price as online. Exactly. So obviously Pete a lot of people are coming in looking for new clubs. What are the most common queries or questions that you're posed with? Okay, well with a driver for example, the one thing we see a lot is people spinning the ball too much. So their ball flight is going very much upwards as opposed to forwards. Right. So my aim is to try and get someone's spin rate between two and two and a half thousand RPM. Is that applicable to like a slice and a hook spin as well or is that more just on the trajectory? Um, that's more on the trajectory and the distance you're going to get on the ball. Right. It's not necessarily going to improve right and left. But okay. like I said to you before, the benefit of having a fitting here with either me or Josh, a PGA professional, we can also help you with your golf swing. Right. So if you are slicing... Oh, so it's part of, part of that same fitting process. Absolutely. It's aligning the club to your typical swing path. Not only, not only will I be fitting you for the club, I might give you the odd tip, for example, putting the ball forward in your stance or releasing the club face, which is going to help you oh, square okay. out the club. It's going to help you square out the club face and hit it straighter. Yeah. So it's not just about the club fitting. Right. No. It's also how to use the club. Excellent. So, Dan, I've had you in here for just under five minutes. What would you say you've learned? I think, you know, okay, you tweak my grip slightly. Yeah. That's, you know, made a little bit of a difference. Yeah. But the importance of having the club fitted for me as yeah. opposed to an off the shelf one from, you know, online or something, I could really see the difference in that short space of time. So I really see the benefit of actually having that club fitted. Good. And you're telling me it's not going to cost me any more money. So exactly. even better. Brilliant. Excellent. Um, so here we are on the 18th tee, we've managed to drag Finn out of the comfort of the pro shop and uh, he's going to talk us through how you should be playing this hole um, to try and get the best out of it. <laughs> what we're going to do, <laughs> me and Dad's going to have a go first, we're going to say what we do and then Finn's going to point out everything that we've done wrong and uh, we're going to take it from there. So here we go. Okay so I'm going to go first, I obviously take a driver. I kind of aim straight through the middle of the gap, um, hoping to, maybe just towards the right hand side of the fifth tee. Um, I tend to hit it with a little bit of fade, so I'm hoping that the ball's going to come round and move towards the centre of the fairway for me, just before the path, hopingly giving me the option of going for it in two. I forgot my glove, so we're going to cut here. I remember my glove, so I'm going to put that on. <laughs> Um, cross my fingers, see how we do. Okay, so uh, I'm going second. Um, I'm going to try and play a similar shot to Matt, maybe not not as much fade, um, but a fade's a new shot for me, so uh, it's very much fingers crossed. <laughs> So winds left to right and into, there is a fair way to be hit somewhere up there after Matt missing it right and uh, Darren missing it left. So hopefully uh, a little bit like uh, Matt, try and aim just to the uh, right hand side of the fifth tee and let the wind bring it back into the middle of the fairway. So, I don't know whether you picked it up, but um, Finn's absolutely spanked one exactly where he said he wanted to put it. It's up by the path somewhere. It may have broken my camera that I set up there to, uh, to uh, uh, take the picture of the shot. Darren's it is straight left. I might have cut mine across to the right hand side. We both missed the fairway. Finn, is there anything particular that we did right or wrong? Uh, wasn't overly keen on your takeaway, Matt. A little bit up and outside the line, so pro pro probably same with it same with the down swing way way across the ball and okay. swinging swinging into the left on the way through so putting putting lots of side spin on it so the the idea where i was aiming that wasn't a bad thing that was good it was just my execution of the swing that absolutely was, okay i'll take that um <laughs> how about darren uh well darren as he said new to trying to hit a fade set up as if he was going to hit a fade but i think a few of the old tendencies tended to creep in he kind of double crossed himself really and pulled it straight left so be interesting to see where that one is 
And finally, for anybody else who's playing this, mm -hmm. say you're coming up to the 18th tee, you're either at the competition altogether, or you know you think you may be with a chance. How would you approach the hole? Uh, I don't think there's an awful lot of uh, scope to hit anything but driver off this tee. Um, definitely avoiding, you know, most people cut the ball, uh, most right-handers move the ball left to right, so definitely avoiding that big oak tree on the left is an absolute must, especially when you've got the space out on the right-hand side of the 10th fairway, which is kind of where you are. Yeah, and just grip it and rip it. Absolutely. <laughs>I'd be into the wind, I'd be five wood, but you haven't got one, so. Right. Um, decided on the hybrid, which um, is all well smoky because I always smoke it. Shot. Great shot. <laughs> so again, uh, this is way back, hours and hours ago, finished his second shot and he's ended up here just off the green. Fantastic shot. I've noticed you walked up with the putter in your hand. I expected um, a bit of a chip on. What's the reason for that? Um, if I was playing a competition round, I'd definitely go putter. Not a lot of rough ground to go over. Pretty much straight onto the green. Especially if the pressure was on, if I had a good score going, definitely go with the putter, get the putter in. I would presume every shot from around the fringe you take with like a wedge or something, or a gap wedge or... No, the, the other club I brought over with me was uh, was seven iron, just to uh, play a chip and run, get over this area of rough ground, get the ball landing on the green, get it running up the green. Uh, much, much safer than ever taking a lot of loft. So they, they'd be my, my two clubs of choice on this, I'm going to go with the putter. So basically no shame in putting off the green? Uh, none at all. Let's have a go then. Unfortunately left it about three feet short. It was a good line but uh, at least it's not uh, at least not past the hole. It's left me left me on a little bit across the slope but a little bit up here. Can I have a go with the seven as well? Mm -hmm. um, just to show us the difference. You can have a go with the seven eyes. Like, talk us through what, why wouldn't you say like, um, I'd say use a 52, 52 degree wedge or something from here, but you're taking a seven? Yeah, just, just too much loft. I mean, one of the things that I use when I'm trying to play shorter shots is, is just to see how much rough ground I have to cover. I'm, I want to get the ball on the green, landed on the green as early as possible. Um, you'll tend to be most accurate, you know, it's accurate club in the bags of putter. Why is that? Because there's not much movement involved. It's a small swing and the ball doesn't take off. Um, you know, so all of a sudden we're using seven iron, 
it's not going to fly that far. I'm only looking to land it probably a yard on the green and let it roll up the rest, but much, much less risk than taking anything well off. The 52 degree, you'd probably have to pitch it halfway. So a lot, a lot of flight to cover there before, uh, before the ball gets up so, the roll. So less risk with as much de-loft as possible? Absolutely. Okay. Get the ball on the green as early. Maybe I should have taken the seven iron first off. <laughs> That was rubbish. Okay, I'm here on the green. Um, I'm technically using a different ball than I started off from, so I think I'll be disqualified from all competitions. Pressure's off, I'm just going to nail this straight in the back of the cup. Okay, well, you unfortunately, see first cut, Darren, probably, uh, probably what wasn't the best. I've left myself five feet left to right across the slope, so uh, yeah, let's see, uh, let's see if we can knock this in the floor. Applause. So right, here we are on the back of the 18th. I played it absolutely horrendously, DQ'd myself by losing several balls. Um, Darren came off with a respectable six. Six after an aggressive put for the for the par five. And uh, Finn walked off with a, a birdie four, quite obviously. Um, final thoughts, how do you think we played it? Did we have the right setup approach? Well, you both got it off the tee well, didn't you? I mean, that was, that was one thing. You both got your drives up and through and onto the fairway. I mean, I think it's just uh, just really important to play a, a sensible layup if if you can. Darren was a little bit blocked out. Um, your second shot didn't quite go to plan, Matt. But you both had the right ideas in, in laying it up and just trying to laying it up to a sensible yardage. If you feel you'd be more comfortable off a flatter lie from 150, absolutely laid up at the top of the hill. But if you feel like a little bit more aggressive, quite happy hitting it up with down slope, then then go for something a little bit shorter. But as with any layup, it's kind of laying it up to a, to a yardage that you would you would kind of feel comfortable with for your third shot. Um, certainly not, just not too aggressive going for the green. Just try and, uh, try better, and leave it short to the hole. Better to be off the green, uh, low underneath the flag Absolutely, than on the green pass. Than on the, on the green pass. Most definitely, we know how quick the greens can get and the, the, there's a big slope on that 18th green, so definitely short the green. Brilliant, okay. Cheers, Finn. Thanks for your time. Cheers, Matt. Cheers, Cheers Darren. Finn. Thank you. Thanks. Until next time. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, <laughs> I'm joined here today with Debbie LeCain. Uh, Debbie's on the Juniors Committee and recently she's played a very active role in um, safeguarding to help the club achieve the golf mark. So, much like yourselves, I have no idea what any of this is, so Debbie's going to explain to us what she's been doing and why it's important to achieve golf mark. So Debbie, what is safeguarding? Uh, safeguarding is making sure that our juniors can play safely and have fun on the course. Right, and, and so that's the safeguarding side. What about the golf mark? The golf mark, it's a qualification that we've had as a club, which is a standard that we've achieved. And we've had it for quite a long time. And it was very much about the safeguarding of juniors. But recently it's been extended and it's now covers a much bigger part of the club. Right. Um, and we've been waiting for Lord Cobham to take over so that we can get all the new policies and procedures um, in place. So there's a lot of work going on and we're hoping to get uh, organised ready for next March. Very good. So, you know, as members, if we see juniors out, out on the course and we see, you know, potentially something happen, what's the process then? What should we do as members? If it's something serious, obviously, you need to take an active role there and then. Right. Um, and I think everybody's aware of the sort of things that they, they would want to go. If you, it's something that needs to talk to the police, then by all means do that straight away. Hopefully we'd never get to that situation. If it's a lower level thing, more like bullying or people not being not treating the juniors as you'd hope they'd be treated, then on the juniors notice board in the corridor, there's a list of who you can speak to. Uh, Graham is very much our main man, and if there's a problem with uh, Graham, with, Graham Yardley, Graham Yardley, yeah. thank you. He's one of the. He'll look after the adult members, and um, if there's any problem that needs sorting out. 
the junior committee will sort out any problems where it's juniors to juniors. Right. And then we're really lucky that we've got um, Peter, who's um, from Worcester, uh, and he looks after um, anything if we had a real serious problem. Right. So, he but all the contacts are on that board. Right. Being on the juniors committee, obviously the club are trying to attract a lot of new junior members. I think from the life for the lifeblood of the club in the future, it's obviously quite important. So, what do the junior juniors committee do to ensure that the junior members understand the rules, etiquette, etc., etc.? Well, as you know, Gareth brings a lot of juniors in from the academy, and recently we've had a big spell of the juniors getting older and moving on to intermediate. Yeah. Um, so, when Gareth brings the new ones into the academy, the first thing he teaches them about rules and about safety. Right. But obviously, they can't when they're young; they can't take in everything. We've recently got quite a, not, a lot of new juniors. Some of them as young as eight, right up to Joe, who's still eighteen, and they know some of the rules, and they're very keen to learn the rules. Yeah. Um, particularly the etiquette type rules so what we're trying to do is teach them as we go along so this is the juniors committee obviously getting the group of the juniors together and giving them some, not instruction as such but explaining certain rules or etiquette or absolutely and we're trying to go out on the course with them as well right. um, so we play with them but what we say is if you see anything then as long as you talk to them in the right way they'll absolutely love to understand the rules right okay. because we all know how difficult it is to understand the rules don't we I think sometimes you know it, it can, you can think oh politically correctness I can't even approach a junior on the course yeah. so what you're saying is if you see them doing something feel free to give them some advice yeah, but just talk to them in a nice way because what we don't want to do is put them off golf. Yeah, you don't want them to feel bullied. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. And we don't need them to understand all the rules. What we need them to understand is the rules of safety and etiquette to ensure that they can fit in with everybody else right. as they play. Okay. Thank you very much, Debbie. Nice to see you. Ooh, kiss as and a well. Kiss. <laughs> right. We've just finished filming, Keith walked in and brought some very good news, so I've managed to entice him onto the camera to tell us a bit about it. So Keith, over to you. Well, I'd just like to say that uh, the seniors played Stourbridge uh, at Stourbridge yesterday and uh, we had a glorious win over them, just, but it was a win over them. And we're all very proud of ourselves because the course was very good there and everything was at the mill afterwards was tremendous. But the highlight was hearing that we had actually won the day and that really made things really perfect for everybody from Hackley. So well done to the team. Well done, fellas. Have we got scores or? Pity you asked me that. <laughs> <laughs> well done, guys. So again, thank you for joining us and watching this video. We're going to wrap things up today uh, with some of the competition results from the last month. I'm going to hand it over to Matt and he's going to fill you all in on who won what. Darren's handing it over to me because he can't read any of my handwriting and I've written them all down. Um, so a few notable scores from the past month. 27th, 27th of August, um, the Dick Williams Trophy was played. That was one, um, that's a team event. It was won by Mark Pilkerton, Lee Nightingale, Michael Doran, Justin Goodby with 122. So well done, fellas. Um, Justin Goodby, congratulations, hole in one as well. Yes, this yeah, yeah, I did see that um, on Facebook. And Lee Smart. Lee Smart, yes. Yeah. Hole in one. Congratulations to Pat Lee Slam and to Justin. into the seventh. Very well done, yeah. fellas. Um, 2nd of September was, of course, Lady Captain's Day, which was a fantastic day. The weather was beautiful that part, wasn't it? Um, ladies' comp was won by... Um, Debbie Lacane, is it Lacane? Debbie Lacane. Yes. Debbie, Debbie, I apologise. Debbie Lacane won the ladies' comp with 36 points. Uh, men's comp was won by Peter Bowen with 42 points. Oh, and if I can just pause you there, Matt. Uh, Steve Wood also won nearest the line on the driving competition, and I won the putting competition. I know it was a fun one, but I still won it. Yeah, you had to get that in, didn't you? I did. <laughs> Uh, 1st of September, the uh, junior lady captain's comp was played, and that was bon won by Rio Yeomans with 47 points, which is <coughs> a score and a half. Wow. Um, so well done, Rio. Uh, 9th of September, the Richard Carradine Memorial was played, and that was run by Russell Savage, Daryl Payne, and John Goodwin with 109 points. I think I can just about read my own handwriting. Um, 15th of September, the seniors held their 9 hole Stableford, which was won by Robert Ravenscroft with 20 points. Um, the 18 hole Stableford, also on the same day, was won by Derek Stride with 31 points. Again, well done, fellas. Um, 16th of September, the ladies' medal number 11 was played. 
That was taken by Linda Raybould with uh, with an 84. That's obviously stroke play. I was thinking 84 points. That's impressive. <laughs> so well done, Linda. And highly unlikely. <laughs> um, also on the 16th, the September medal was played and also the League of Friends trophy. Um, Division 1 was won by Ash Rudge uh, with the 71, who also won the lowest gross. Uh, Division 2 was won by John Kidd with 72, beating me by one shot, might I add. And Division 3 was won by Paul Kelsall with the 70. Um, and then just finally on the 17th of September, the Junior Open was held here at Hagley Golf Country Club. And that was won by um, our, ever, our very own Tom Waitman with a 67, uh, with Joe Price coming second, second with a 69. So well done, everybody. Uh, good scores. Uh, keep up the good work. So that's it for this month. Uh, thanks for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed the video. We've uh, we've spent a lot of time making, and we look forward to you uh, looking at the next one in October. Can I just point out, with the course getting wetter? Good point. <clears throat> With the course getting wetter, obviously a lot of people take trolleys around on the course. Um, obviously, if you need to take a trolley around, then that's fair enough. Just be mindful of the places around the course which take a lot of wear and tear, because obviously as it gets wetter, the trolley's going through, they're just going to churn up the grass on the course. If you can, if you're able to do it, we would all appreciate it if you could carry your bags uh, rather than take a trolley. Um, understandably, some people don't want to. If you don't, then, then that's fine. Just be mindful of the course. Use your winter wheels when... Uh, when it's pointed out by the pros and if we can all just work together to try and take as much care of the course <coughs> as possible um, I think we'd all appreciate it and we'd all get a lot better use out of the course throughout well, the year. Well I mean something maybe something else may be worth considering and maybe people haven't tried this you can buy a pencil bag um, the pro shops don't have them in stock but they can order you a pencil bag and interestingly in my locker I have a pencil bag and then my main set of clubs also fit in that locker so you know, if it's very wet and I am going to carry, it holds maybe six or seven clubs. But in the winter, that's more than enough unless it's, you know, maybe a competition. It's still enough to still enjoy a round of golf. So, you know, maybe that's worth considering as well. Long story short, if you can do anything to help look after the course over the winter months when it's get, getting wetter, yeah, it's not going to help everybody else. It's also going to help you. We're all going to get a lot more benefit out of the golf course and it's going to be better all year round. Um, and you will notice over the next, well, it's already started, but over the next month, you will notice more roping and staking. Um, please try and avoid taking trolleys inside those. We're doing it to try and help set the course so it, you know, it replenishes and repairs better at the start of the spring. So you know, just please pay attention to that. If you see an area that's getting particularly churned up and the ropes and stakes haven't been moved, try and avoid that and if you have time, maybe move the stakes out a little bit to help protect that area. Thank you. That's covered that. Right, um, thanks everybody for watching. I'll stick the emails underneath as usual. Um, any ideas, anything, if you want to get in touch, you're more than welcome. Um, and we look forward to doing the next one for next month. That we will. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers.